During just one night of sleep, your body will replace billions of cells, it'll repair broken down muscle tissue, release many different hormones, and your brain will process all the new information that you've gathered during the day. Anywhere from a quarter to a third of your entire life will be spent sleeping, so you can bet that it's a pretty important and impressive process that affects everything from your energy levels to how fast you age and your body's ability to build muscle and burn fat. So we're gonna examine the scientific research to find out exactly what happens to your body while you're sleeping and how you can improve your sleep to fully take advantage of your body's natural rechargeable battery. When taking a closer look, the first thing that you'll realize is that sleep is actually not a steady state process where your body is in the same state the entire time. Instead, during a normal night of sleep, you progress through four or five sleep cycles that last about 70 minutes to two hours each. Each of those sleep cycles also contains four individual sleep stages. The first three stages are composed of non-rapid eye movement, also known as NREM. Meanwhile, the fourth stage is composed of rapid eye movement, also known as REM. To give you an example in a graph, here's what a night of sleep looks like when you go through five cycles that last about 90 minutes each. As you can see, during the first cycle, you spend most of your time in non-REM stage three, but the further you get into your night's sleep, the less time you'll spend in non-REM stage three, and instead, you'll spend more time in REM sleep. As you go through all the stages, different things will happen to your body during each stage. The first stage of the sleep cycle is a transition period between wakefulness and sleep. During this short period of relatively light sleep, which lasts several minutes, your heartbeat, breathing, and eye movements all slow down and your muscles relax with only occasional twitches. Your brain, on the other hand, will still be fairly active and it'll produce high amplitude theta waves, which are slow brain waves occurring mostly in the frontal lobe of the brain. Even though your brain will remain active, the brain waves will begin to slow from the normal daytime wakefulness pattern. Now, it's relatively easy to wake someone up while they're in stage one sleep. In fact, people often report that they never fell asleep at all if they're woken up while still in stage one sleep. You might have experienced this while lightly falling in and out of sleep while watching a TV show before you shut off the TV and actually move forward in the sleeping cycle and go to sleep. So once you do actually shut that TV off and drift deeper into sleep, you move into stage two sleep, where the body goes into a state of deeper relaxation. Now keep in mind, this is still considered light sleep compared to later stages, but your heartbeat and breathing rate will slow down even further. Your muscles will become even more relaxed. Your eye movements will stop and your body temperature will begin to drop. Due to all these adjustments, your body's total energy expenditure will start to drop as well. This is largely due to your muscles being much less active, but also caused by other bodily processes that also slow down. During this stage, your brain will also begin to produce bursts of rapid rhythmic brain activity, which are known as sleep spindles. Sleep spindles are believed to be crucial for memory consolidation. This is an activity where your brain gathers, processes, and filters new memories that you acquired during the previous day. This is also one reason getting enough sleep is crucial as a student. If you sleep well, your brain will be able to retain what you learned much better. The same can be said for almost anything new that you're trying to learn and retain. Sleep is crucial to solidify that information into your head. As you move forward into the sleep cycle, you'll enter into stage three, which is also known as deep sleep. You spend the most time in deep sleep during the first half of the night, where each cycle of stage three lasts for about 20 to 40 minutes. But as you continue sleeping, the stage threes get shorter and you'll spend more and more time in REM sleep instead. If you've ever tried to wake someone up but the person wasn't very responsive to your attempt, that person was likely in stage three of the sleep cycle. During this stage, muscle tension, heart rate, and breathing rate decreases even further as the body continues to relax. Your brain activity during this stage also has a different identifiable pattern that we call delta waves. That's why stage three is also sometimes referred to as delta sleep or slow wave sleep. This stage three portion is believed to be the most restorative part of the sleep cycle, allowing for your body to recover and grow. For example, we have studies that show that slow wave sleep is associated with large increases in body restitutional processes, more specifically, protein synthesis. Since protein synthesis is vital for recovering from workouts and building muscle, you could argue that this is the most important stage of sleep from a muscle building perspective. It's also believed that stage three is important for the health of your immune system, as well as various other bodily processes. 
While brain activity is reduced during this stage, research indicates that deep sleep contributes to creativity and insightful thinking. This is interesting because in many modern societies, we prioritize hard work over sleep, to the point where some people go through sleep deprivation on a weekly basis just to keep up with their work demands. In reality, not getting enough sleep can make you significantly less creative, productive, and a less efficient problem solver at work. Aside from your brain getting a boost in your critical thinking abilities, your brain will also further consolidate declarative memories during stage three, such as general knowledge, facts or statistics, personal experiences, and other things that you've learned. From there, we finally move into stage four, also known as REM, which stands for rapid eye movement. The reason why it's named this way is because as the name implies, this stage is associated with rapid movements of the eyes. This stage of the sleep cycle is also where you're most likely to experience dreams. Even though you can have dreams at any stage of the sleep cycle, they're the most prevalent and intense during REM sleep. Interestingly, the kind of dream you have can also be impacted by the stage of the sleep cycle that you're in while having that dream. A 2004 study published in the Journal of Learning and Memory found that dreams that occur in the REM stage of sleep are usually more fanciful, immersive, or bizarre dreams compared to earlier stages. Also given that stage four becomes prolonged during later cycles of your night's sleep, this explains why you might frequently wake up in the middle of a dream. If we go back to the graph from before, we can see in this example that you can wake up in the middle of REM sleep multiple times throughout the night. Another very interesting thing that happens is that your brain stops slowing down and seemingly goes in reverse during REM sleep. That's right, brain activity levels actually pick up during REM sleep and will even near activity levels seen while you're awake. At the same time, the body experiences atonia, which is a temporary paralysis of the muscles. The two exceptions to this rule are your eyes and the muscles that control your breathing. Those continue to stay active. While your eyes are closed, they can be seen darting quickly from side to side, which is again how this stage gets its name, rapid eye movement. Since all the other muscles of your body become paralyzed, some people experience something called dream paralysis. It's the feeling of being conscious but unable to move. Our ancestors often believed that this was the result of a supernatural phenomenon called the hag, which refers to a witch-like woman sitting on top of the chest, restricting our movements while sleeping. But nowadays, with more scientific research at our disposal, we know that dream paralysis is the result of your brain preventing your muscles from moving to protect yourself from acting those dreams out and hurting yourself in the process. Now, throughout the entire time that you're asleep, there are other very important changes that happen within your body. For example, there are various hormones that either increase or decrease while you sleep, which in turn can have significant impacts on many bodily functions. One of the hormones that increases is testosterone. As mentioned in a 2015 study published in the Journal of JAMA, the majority of the daily testosterone release in men occurs during sleep. So if you're getting burnt out working crazy hours and sacrificing sleep in the process, you're very likely to negatively impact your primary male sex hormone responsible for benefiting everything from your daily motivation and drive to your body composition. Just a few hours of extra sleep can make a huge difference in terms of testosterone. In fact, we have a study on over 530 Chinese men that show that each extra hour of sleep was able to increase testosterone by roughly 15%. Another hormone that spikes while you're asleep is human growth hormone, also known as HGH. This hormone was long believed to be important for muscle growth, but based on the current scientific evidence, that doesn't seem to be true. Instead, HGH might have some fat loss benefits and it may assist with preventing muscle loss, which is why it's still an important hormone for people that wanna optimize their body composition. HGH actually spikes during the first few hours of the night. It's generally produced in the first three sleep cycles, which usually happen between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. While HGH acts in pretty predictable ways, one tricky hormone that both decreases and increases while you sleep is cortisol, also known as the stress hormone. Cortisol decreases during the first few hours of sleep, but then it starts to peak when it's time to wake up to give you that energy. This is because cortisol is a double-edged sword. The right amounts of cortisol released at the right times can increase alertness, focus, and energy levels, but if you have chronically elevated cortisol levels for seemingly no reason, that cortisol is gonna run wild in your body. Just one of the side effects of this is that you're gonna be stressed out of your mind, negatively impacting your overall health and well-being. 
Now, aside from these hormones, waste removal is another very important step during the sleeping process. Your brain, for example, will clear out all the trash while you sleep. If we look at a 2013 study involving mice, researchers found that waste removal within the brain is most active during sleep. This study showed that the space between brain cells increased during sleep, which allows the brain to flush out toxins that build up during the hours that you're awake. This might also be one of the reasons why you're less sharp and may experience brain fog if you don't get enough sleep, although there needs to be more research done on humans to definitively make that conclusion. One last very strange thing that can happen while you're sleeping that's actually happened to me before is something known as somnambulism, which is basically a fancy scientific term for sleepwalking. Of course, not everyone will experience sleepwalking, but researchers found that about 2.6% of US adults and 29% of children from around two to 13 years old do experience sleepwalking. Sleepwalking appears to be a paradox at first glance since sleep is associated with muscular relaxation. How can you be walking around and maybe even performing other actions while you're sleeping, right? Well, usually people that sleepwalk simply take a walk around the house and might even unconsciously eat some food. But in some other cases, sleepwalkers might even perform far more complex and potentially dangerous tasks like using sharp objects or trying to drive a car. For example, there's an absurd news story from 2015 where a 15-year-old girl from the UK managed to climb up a 130-foot crane all while sleepwalking. Not only that, but she remained there, still sleeping until a firefighter climbed up the crane and rescued her. So even though many people are under the false belief that you shouldn't wake up a sleepwalker, you definitely should if they're attempting to perform an action that could potentially hurt themselves or others. Now, to ensure that you get the highest quality sleep possible to provide optimal benefits for your body composition and your overall health, I have a few simple recommendations. First of all, exercise throughout the week. Exercise physically exhausts your body and is proven to help you fall asleep and stay asleep. Having a consistent routine is also highly beneficial for sleep quality and quantity. So try to go to sleep and wake up at the same time each day so that your body can adapt to that pattern. Another thing that helps is lowering the temperature and sleeping in a colder environment. The bed that you select also will play a big impact on sleep. Some people will feel more comfortable and get better rest on a firm mattress, while others will sleep better on a soft one. Make sure your mattress isn't hurting your joints and causing a lot of tossing and turning throughout the night. You'll also ideally want to cut off caffeine intake at about 12 o'clock in the afternoon to prevent the caffeine from keeping you up all night. Finally, one last thing you can do to break a pattern of insomnia if you're having trouble sleeping for a night or two is temporarily supplement with melatonin or an over-the-counter sleeping supplement. So that about wraps it up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, if you'd like to set up the ideal plan for your specific body so that you could burn fat and build muscle in the shortest amount of time possible without the typical trial and error, then visit my website and try my six-week shred. With this program, you'll get a customized diet plan, a recipe book with over 42 mouth-watering meals, a full video exercise library, and a coach to guide you through your workout program and answer any questions that might come up in the process. Best of all, we motivate you to follow through by offering you a full refund for simply putting your best foot forward and completing the program. So it's free for those of you that actually participate and try. We have thousands of five-star reviews so you can rest assured that people are meeting their goals and enjoying the process the entire time. To find out more, you can click the link in the description below or head on over to my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.